Shall we begin? Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Minecraft. We are back after a week hiatus. Sorry about that. I knew going into last week that it was going to be a rough week for me to try to record an episode, and sure enough, it was. So we are back building. It actually occurs to me that I haven't built the downstairs portion in a long time. Um, this is going to go all the way up. Woo! Um, we're not going to do that today. Instead, we're going to work on the walls a little more today, and then we'll probably get back to it a little later. Now, for these stairs, I, I still am not happy with this. I've worked on this a little bit off camera. And the idea of how the stairs are actually supposed to be is that they are rounded, coming out like so. Like... I would say like this, and then they kind of flatten in the middle, and then they round back. So I was trying toying around with that kind of concept of coming out a little bit, or not too much. I didn't want to come out all the way, but I wanted to come out a little bit, and I wanted to round it a little bit. But the problem with how Minecraft really works with the rounding, with doing that with stairs, is everything's square, right? And so... Like, I can't build out right here, so it has to go inwards and back. Um, so, and then it, you end up with this weird pyramid effect. I think... Let's try this. Try one more and see if that makes us a little happier with how it looks. Yeah, I, I think I actually liked it a little better last time the the other way because it gives it a little bit more character. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, like so. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a big fan of this. If you, tell me what you guys think about this sort of look idea here. Um, it all kind of blends in. Maybe I could do. At least like this. Let's let's try this. Use these just to give it a little bit more color and break it up a little bit. I mean, you won't see it straight on, but you'll see it as you go up, and it kind of brings in the the flooring. Now I don't even know if I'm going to keep this flooring or if I'm going to go to something else. But for now, maybe this will work. We'll see. Um. This is coming along though, uh, so you'll see, I, I've decided not to do a strip because going up, this is all going to be a big castle, I think. Um, actually, maybe it's not, because I think the second floor, hmm, I think the second floor actually does, we'll, we'll see what we do with the second floor. I think the second floor does go all the way over this this um, chasm here, so the second floor um, will stop the, these walls from going up. So maybe I could do another. Hi, sheepy. Um, maybe I could do like a couple lines of the the plain stone. I'm out of stone right now, so I can't really work with stone. So let's go in here. I did these off camera. Uh, now I've lowered, I, so I, I made this entryway really tall, it's quite tall actually, and then the this section is pretty tall too, but then I'm having it lower a little bit into this hallway, and this looks a little more reasonable actually. I might actually want to tear this down or just add a, a second level so that the ceilings are a little lower. It does give some space, so maybe I'll keep it, maybe I won't. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. And then... Hmm. And then we have this. Yeah. See, I think I actually screwed this up. I, th I think this was supposed to be one higher. 
Oh, well, we just went along with it. <laughs> oh, well, I think that actually works pretty well. I think I like it. So, the next step, we have this all covered up. The next step, I think, what we're going to do is we're actually going to fill these in. I'd, I like having flat surfaces where at all possible. So we're going to fill this in right here. Just so that there is a flat surface, for the most part. And then we're going to torch this up a little bit. Do I have the torches? I have some. Uh, let's go into 7. And this will stop crud from spawning. Because then what we can do is we can cover this up. Like so. And I'll fill this in too. Alright, so this week, a lot has happened in the video game, video game week. Uh, I don't know which one to talk about first. Uh, E3. Now, we're going to talk about Steam. <laughs> Steam, and really it's not just Steam, it's GOG too. GOG started their spring sale. Last year, last year, <laughs> last year they did too, uh, but last week actually GOG started their spring sale and Steam followed up this week with theirs. Now what just means is I'm glad that I got a job because I'm getting poor because video games are not cheap. They are not cheap. And I, you know, the last year I'd say I was not overly fond of the sales that that Steam had for their specials. Uh, generally speaking Steam sales are the whole reason why I started buying Steam in the first place. I was one of the people who hated uh, the DRM of Steam and I I remember when I bought Civ 5 um, Civ 5 required you to log into Steam to play, and it was really one of the first games that I was exposed to that did that. And I was ticked off, like, ticked off that, that they required a login. And I think even initially, you couldn't play without an internet connection. I think it was one of those games. And I, they, they've since patched it, but I believe that was the case initially. At any rate, I didn't like I, I didn't like DRM. I didn't like always connected, and part of that is that it's I guess the collector in me, right? Like I like to collect video games, and I hate the concept that I can't like 15 years from now if I can't play my game. Like, what if in 15 years from now Steam is gone? Uh, we'll just start with that. What if Steam is gone? How am I going to play all these games that I've purchased on Steam for a really reasonable price in a lot of the cases? But for, for Civ 5, that wasn't the case. It was like full on $50, $60 for Civ 5. What am I going to do? Right? Like, how, how do you play a game that was online only and that, that required a DRM authentication? People have the same problem with Diablo 3. And the new SimCity is like the idea that you can't play if you don't have an internet or if the service goes down. Uh, people don't generally like that. And I'm surprised that s companies still haven't come on to that because it's been like seven or eight years now of them doing this and they're still doing it. Uh, but I did eventually break into it because the sales were so good. GOG doesn't have that problem. Because GOG is DRM free, right? So I love GOG. We love GOG. And I'm even more happy that GOG is having... Um, GOG is starting to implement a, a, a shell so that you can get achievements and you can see what your friends are playing slash buying. And that, just like in Steam. And that, that that's really the one thing that GOG doesn't have that Steam does. Anyway, back to the topic. 
Sales have started and I am getting poor and I am glad that I have a job to pay for it. Uh, because this would have been a hellish week or two of not being able to buy all these wonderful sales. And this year, for whatever reason, I have really, really, really liked the sales. I have bought a good number. I've, I think I'm buying, on average, three or four games a day. Which is a lot. Um, but the sales are good. I like them. Getting a lot of fun games. Never going to play half of them, I'm sure. I, I, what this has done, though... Is it has, it has made me wanting to play new games. That's that's been a thing that's been happening. It's been part of the reason why I've been kind of down on uh, Minecraft. I've been down on a couple of. I, I haven't played Diablo three in a couple weeks. Um, I've been down on playing the older games that I've been playing for a few months now, and so I've been playing new games off camera a lot of the times just because I'm trying them out. Um, but I am going to start a new series for a brand new game in the next couple of weeks. I don't know if it's going to be start this next Monday or the week after that. Uh, I have a little bit more uh, planning to do before I get there. Um, but I do have a new series started that's going to start, I believe, on Monday. Either this week or next week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it is a roguelike game. I'm I'm kind of jazzed about it. I think it's... It's a fun and different take on the genre. Very excited to, tr to, to play more of it and to have you guys watch me play it. Don't know how long it's going to last. Um, honestly, uh, with roguelikes, they get repetitive, uh, especially for video consumption. So, I don't know how long it's going to last, but for now, we're going to play it. Um, so, keep your eye out for that. And now, we will talk about E3. Um, so, E3 happened. I did write a blog post about uh, a little more specific my thoughts on uh, Microsoft and Sony's. And I'll probably write another blog post for Nintendo's press conference stuff. Um, my general thought for Microsoft was that their show was fairly meh and I will preface that by saying I hate shooters and everything they showed was a shooter. They showed Halo 5 and Dead uh, Gears Dead Rising, Gears of War 4 and Gears of War Remake and I think there was another shooter in there somewhere. I don't know. It seemed like they had a lot of shooters and then what they didn't have for shooters their big, their big thing was backward compatibility, which I didn't care about because I already have an Xbox 360. And, you know, by the time they get backward compatibility in, it's going to be two years later, and I think that's two years too late. That backward compatibility is meant to help through the dry spell of launch time. And Xbox One, I don't know if you guys have noticed... It's past launch time. If they're still having game problems, they're having really serious problems. Um, so I, I don't think that's that's actually a good sign that they're showing off. What they're showing it off is that you can play old games and not new games. Um, so there's that. Uh, the one thing that I really liked was. Fallout 4 mod support on the Xbox One. I think that's phenomenal. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, that's always been one of the big advantages PC has, and it makes me sad that PC might be losing that advantage. Um, but, I, you know, there's still probably going to be a lot more advantages to PC. Uh, I'm also not... I haven't played Fallout 3, I'll be honest, but I, I, I didn't like the direction that Bethesda took Fallout 3. It makes sense that they put it in first-person perspective, but I'm it looks more like an FPS now than an actual RPG, and that makes me sad. To me, an RPG is not that it's a an FPS game with stats and a story and some gear. Like, stats, story, gear is not what an RPG makes. They are part of an RPG, but they are not all of it. I think every game nowadays pretty much has stats, story, gear. I think that's standard. 
And I think it's stupid if we call every single game an RPG. That's just stupid. Um, anyway, that's my soapbox. Uh, the other thing they showed was their VR tech. Uh, the HoloLens, which, quite frankly, still extremely disappointed that they're calling it hollow and there's no hollow. <laughs> hollow! Um, there is no holographic anything in HoloLens. I don't know why they're calling it hollow, but uh, maybe because it's hollow. <laughs> um, but they're calling it HoloLens for some odd reason. Um, not, not interested. Not, not interested. That means I am interested. No, not, not, not interested. Yeah, not, not, not interested. And, uh, the reason is, um, I haven't bought into the VR, the, the VR headset thing yet. I want to see it. I want to play it. I want to touch it. I want to feel it. It might be great. My very large feeling on the subject is that most of these games are going to be awesome to check out for a couple of minutes. And then once you get that couple of minutes in the VR, you're going to take the VR headset off and play it with a controller because nothing beats a controller. And that's just the end all result. I, I don't think it sounds like a comfortable feeling to me to, um, to go out and, and, and play video games with something on my face. I don't want to play video games with something on my face. I don't like wearing sunglasses because something's on my face that shouldn't be there. I don't like things being on my face. And I'm sorry. That's just a fact. I'm not interested in Oculus Rift for the same reason. It has nothing to do with Microsoft. I have no interest in Sony's. And if Nintendo did it, I'd have no interest in theirs either. I'm actually surprised Nintendo doesn't do it. But they probably are like everybody else is doing it. We don't need to do it too. Um, so yeah, no interest... They showed Minecraft, oddly enough, and I, for that reason, I feel like I should talk about it here, because Minecraft is is my game. Um, they showed Minecraft, uh, which is cool. Uh, <laughs> so, the, the modes for playing Minecraft with the HoloLens is, you can either sit and stare at a wall and play like you always do, yay, or you could... Uh, kind of hover over like you're a god and play like that. Now that that one was very cool to look at. I I had that whoa, that is awesome moment that I think everybody in the crowd had. But then after I sat there and thought about it, I was like, is that really awesome? Like again, it felt like it would make it for a very awesome demo for, of like 15 minutes, um, and then. I wouldn't want to play it like that. I would go back to playing Minecraft like I've always played it, right? Like, I can't imagine playing Minecraft like that. That's the problem. Like, I just... It doesn't seem like a way that I would want to play Minecraft. Um, and I don't think it was really intended for that either. The whole presentation actually reminded me of Microsoft's launch announcement of... What was it? Uh, uh, Windows 8. Uh few years ago they when they launched Windows 8 they had this table with this giant LED screen in it that was all touch sensitive this thing must have cost like fifty thousand dollars it's unrealistic um, that you could you know it would be a computer screen and you could it, it did things like you could put a coffee cup down on it and it would tell you how hot the coffee was based off the the temperature readings that it had within the surface of it and you could roll a giant die and it would be able to tell you uh, what rolled and I was like wow that's cool that's really cool I really want one of those and you know I still do kind of want one <laughs> but when you st step back from that idea for a couple minutes you realize how stupid that is like for one if I roll a giant die on a table and I can't tell what was rolled with my known two eyes? Why do I need a table to tell me what was rolled? I can't see the table either. Uh, likewise, um, who cares how, how hot, like, 
It'd be it'd be a fun little facts gathering mission to, that I could see that my my T is 200 degrees right now, but yeah, would I be willing to pay fifty thousand dollars for this? No, no, not even remotely. This this whole concept was a very bad one and one that I think they realized was a bad one, which is why it never came out. Um, and I, I felt that way about about Hololens. It's a very cool prototype. Very nifty idea. I would like to play with it. I don't think I would like to own it. And this is, this idea is more than likely a lot cheaper than the giant table was. And so maybe more feasible for me to go and spend 150 bucks to go buy it. But I still feel like, meh, I don't really want to get into that technology. I want to play with it. I'm not going to buy it. Um... So Sony, I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to have to speed through Sony. Sony, I actually did like. I thought they play, they showed a lot more actual games that I would like to play. Uh, the, uh, the Last Guardian looked weird, really weird. I don't even know what to think about it weird. But I like that they're doing something different there. I like that it's different. Um, Horizon, again looked very different. I liked that it looked different. I liked that they weren't just showing the same game all over again that everybody else seems to enjoy doing. I am in love with No Man's Sky. I make no secret about it. That game might actually make me buy a PS4. And they can't show enough of that game. I just want I just want it. I want it right now. <laughs> um what else did they show? They showed things and stuff. Um, they showed their VR technology, which I didn't care about. It looks worse than Microsoft's. Um, I don't know. They just showed a whole lot of games, and I was I was very pleased um, with. I thought they had the best showing out of all three of the companies. Nintendo, I unfortunately felt like had the worst showing. And I am a Nintendo fanboy, and, you know, I'm still excited for what they have, but they didn't really show anything new. They finally showed off Star Fox, the next one that they're and it, that they're bringing out, and it looks beautiful. I'm very, very excited to play that game because it's the first one since the N64. Um, being made by Plat Platinum Games, who made Bayonetta, of all things. Wouldn't have expected that. Um, but still, very exciting to me. Uh, they, the, I think the biggest thing that they had was that they launched Earthbound, uh, beginnings on the Wii U on Sunday to go along with their, the championship. And I thought the championship was awesome. Those two things I thought were awesome and was completely worth the whole thing. And Mario Maker does look great. Um, but that was, they, they revealed that and have looked at it several times since. So that one's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, they didn't really show Zelda because they delayed it till next year, so they're pulling back on that, which is very disappointing. And I think I think really Zelda's absence is a big reason why Nintendo's show felt so dejected compared to what they usually do. They they didn't have that big title to really show. I mean, Xenoblade is awesome, Star Fox is awesome, but it's no Zelda, you know? And they also didn't have a Super Mario World or Universe or Infinity or whatever the heck you want to call the next Super Mario Brothers. They didn't have that to show to make up for, um, to make up for the lack of Zelda. And I, and I think it really made for a disappointing E3 for Nintendo. Um, they do have some good games, but they needed they needed a big wow factor, and I think they were missing it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much my impressions of E3. What did you guys think of E3? Tell me in the comments below. Also, if you guys have ideas for that their that their staircase that we were that we started the episode with, it seems like a long time ago. But yeah, we started with a staircase. If you guys have any ideas for, like, how I might be able to get that kind of roundabout feel still, I am very curious about how to do that. Um, I have no idea. No idea. 
what what I should do over there. So uh, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about E3. Tell me what you think about the uh, the stairs and how to do that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next week, and hopefully we can get back to, to uh, building that downstairs area a little more, just to change up what I'm building. And have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.